Just because you get straight Bs doesn't mean that you can't be top of your class. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 impressive B movies. For this list, we'll be looking at what modern cinema would describe as a B movie, i.e., low budget films that weren't exactly aiming for art house prestige. As campy and cheaply made as they might have been, these particular B movies all hold a significant and even important place in cinematic history. Number 20 Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Two years after Stephen King published It, this film gave us a very different take on the increasingly popular evil clown trope. One might assume that Killer Clowns from Outer Space caught on solely due to its title. It was a spaceship, and there was these things, these. The, uh, Killer clowns, and, and they, they shot popcorn at us, we barely got away! But there are countless B-movies out there with ridiculous titles, and most of them just blend into each other. <laughs> that this one continues to stand out proves that there's more to it than just a bizarre name and an even more bizarre premise. Don't worry, Dave. All we want to do is kill you. Thanks to its inventive production design, freaky practical effects, and wicked sense of humor, Killer Clowns more than earned its cult status. Few would describe it as high art, but the film knows what it wants to be and excels in its execution. Oh, we in the freezer with the ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Anybody want a dipsicle? Number 19, Carnival of Souls. This chilling horror picture was produced for $33,000, which even for 1962 was a bare bones budget. <laughs> Director Herc Harvey didn't need millions of dollars to create an eerie atmosphere, though. All it took was haunting cinematography, a ghoulish musical score, and actors who could send a shiver up your spine with their fiendish expressions and mannerisms. It's been less than a week since you were in a car that crashed into the river. How you got out of that, no one seems to know. But that experience must have been a serious emotional shock. You think I imagined all of it, don't you? If anything, the necessity to keep the budget down worked to the filmmakers' advantage, inspiring them to get extra creative with certain shots. The behind-the-scenes stories will only make you appreciate Carnival of Souls more. That's just what I need! Get mixed up with some girl who's off her rocker! <laughs> I don't want to be left alone! Despite slipping through the cracks when it first came out, the film would go on to inspire the likes of M. Night Shyamalan, George A. Romero, and David Lynch. Number 18. Piranha. This wildly successful parody of Jaws played into similar animal predator themed B movies of its time and terrified summer moviegoers with its frenzied school of piranhas that killed anything in its wake. The plot is simple the US government secretly engineered piranhas for the Vietnam War and canned the experiment at the war's end. However, through the indiscretion of the lead scientist on Operation Razor Teeth, some surviving creatures were released and many deaths ensued. The film cost under $800,000 to make and earned $16 million at the box office, and even Steven Spielberg quipped that it was his favorite knockoff of his film Jaws. Number 17, The Blob. <laughs> What's scarier than an oncoming, slow-rolling, evil blob from outer space? It's kind of like a mass that keeps getting bigger and bigger. Well, a lot of things, which makes this movie one of the campiest horror films ever produced. Doctor, come back, come back! <laughs> this is further solidified by the film's straightforward name, with producers opting out of the initial title, The Molten Meteor. There's nobody in here but us monsters. Even with such a simple premise, though, one in which a meteorite crash lands onto our planet and releases an alien being that gets bigger every time it eats someone, the film's technical aspects dazzled audiences and made the sci-fi horror a box office smash hit. The Blob is further memorable for being Steve McQueen's first big screen lead role. <laughs> Number 16, Attack of the Crab Monsters. Successfully blending suspense, horror, and humor, this black and white flick only cost $70,000 to make, yet it earned $1 million at the box office, which was quite a feat in the 1950s. <laughs> Armed with a zany plot, Attack of the Crab Monsters follows a research team that sets out to find a scientific expedition that disappeared in the Pacific Ocean before them, only for the group to encounter two giant radioactive crabs in heat. <laughs> Very foolish. 
what's not to love? Besides the wonderfully campy story, the underwater scenes are great as they take inspiration from the book by Jacques Cousteau and the oceanographer's fame during that era. Number 15, The Toxic Avenger. This flick is well known for its unapologetic 80s blend of camp and gore. In this superhero movie, the protagonist begins his journey as a scrawny nerd named Melvin that's picked on while he's working as a janitor at a local gym. Like many superhero origin stories that have come before and after it, the Toxic Avenger sees the protagonist fall into a toxic vat, only to be disfiguringly transformed into the super strong titular character affectionately known as Toxie. The film's plot was screwball enough for it to attain cult following through midnight movie showings, and garnered it enough success for multiple sequels and a cartoon series, though the latter was unfortunately poorly received. Number 14, Pink Flamingos. It's sunny out today. I want them sunny side up. Even as the old studio system died out and new Hollywood rose up, John Waters was seen as an outsider whose work was generally too strange for mainstream moviegoers. We'll see who's the filthiest person alive. We'll just see! But that didn't stop him from finding an audience that shared his appreciation for camp, dark comedy, and transgressive art. Led by an uproarious performance from Divine, Pink Flamingos put Waters on the map. You are no longer the filthiest person alive. Oh. We are. Oh. Inside, the filthiest people alive. Oh, just as I thought. The film prided itself on being an exercise in poor taste, even using that as a tagline. While Pink Flamingos was every bit as trashy as it aspired to be, Waters' self-aware approach set it apart from other exploitation films at the time. Controversial yet playful, Pink Flamingos showed that there was a market for underground films willing to push the envelope. Number 13, Foxy Brown. Don't let him die. We can't talk about B movies without bringing up the black exploitation genre, which peaked in popularity throughout the 70s. You know damn well what you did. Now I'm not going to stand here and argue with you. Now you better tell me who you talk to because it's either them or you. During this period, Pam Greer emerged as arguably the most iconic leading lady of the genre. Fresh off the success of playing the titular character in Coffee, Greer reunited with director Jack Hill for this spiritual successor of sorts. Hey, skinhead. I can't see. Critics initially wrote Foxy Brown off as sleazy and stereotypical, as they did many black exploitation features at the time. Yet others would come to view Foxy as a beacon for female empowerment, as well as a trailblazer for African American action heroines. I don't want to live anymore! I know. That's the idea. Looking back years later, this is not only one of the most entertaining black exploitation films, but also one of the most influential. Number 12, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. This is director and writer Ed Wood's seminal sci-fi film. You got me that time, Mac. This American flight 812 request. <laughs> Often regarded as one of the worst productions in cinema history, it also has one of the most passionate cult followings. Stop him, Turner. He's close enough. Turn off your electro gun. No! No! Stop him, Turner! I can't get it! It's jammed! The black and white sci-fi horror flicks plot is surreal. Aliens want to prevent mankind from destroying the universe by initiating Plan 9, which brings the planet's dead back to life. And expectedly, there are a lot of issues. Because all you of Earth are idiots! This includes redundant dialogue and actors reading from their scripts during scenes. Terribly great. We gotta hand it to them though, they, they're far ahead of us. Number 11, The Room. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Tommy Wiseau wrote, directed, produced, and starred in The Room, which is often considered one of the worst films ever. <laughs> you must be kidding, aren't you? Impressively bad, you might say. How dare you talk to me like that? However, its nonsensical plotline, awkward dialogue, and camera shots have earned the 2003 film cult status. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! 
Intended as a serious romantic drama, Wiseau has since rebuilt it as a black comedy after it faced critical backlash. No, I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? While the story follows a poorly executed love triangle between a banker, his fiance, and his best friend, the real gems are the narrative flaws and subplots, such as the scene in which the characters are inexplicably playing football in tuxedos. Mark, go. Go, go. Deep. <laughs> it doesn't make much sense as a whole, but the room is oddly worth suffering through again and again, with Wiseau's memoir of the film even being adapted into a critically acclaimed movie 14 years later. I kill you, you bastard! You could kill me if you tried. You betrayed me, you're not good, you, you're just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip! Trey, shut up! Number 10, Brain Dead, also known as Dead Alive. You've got. The bite. This Zomcom was directed by Peter Jackson of the Lord of the Rings fame. Its plot is classic B-movie material, following the spread of a zombie virus through a hybrid creature known as a Sumatran rat monkey. This creature is the offspring of tree monkeys that have been raped by infected rats. So needless to say, Braindead's filled with tons of gore. Called Dead Alive in North America, its most memorable scene is perhaps when the main character fights his zombie mother, during which she sucks him back into her womb. Initially a box office failure, the comedy horror flick has since garnered a cult following and critical acclaim. Number 9. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes <laughs> This is a classic comedy horror flick. Director and writer John DiBello intentionally created a B-movie that was a satire of B-movies. <laughs> You've captured a giant tomato. As such, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is filled with references to horror classics, such as Hitchcock's The Birds and Spielberg's Jaws. The premise is simple. Tomatoes that are tired of being consumed have somehow turned into evil killers, and it's up to a presidentially appointed team to save America. We said we live together like sister and brother, but they captured a cannery and bottled my mother. Despite a meager budget and poor critical reviews, the comedy horror became a surprising success among moviegoers, attained cult status, and spawned several sequels. Hey, will somebody please pass the ketchup? <laughs> Number 8. The Blair Witch Project Often praised for its impact on independent filmmaking, The Blair Witch Project is also among the most profitable B-movies ever produced. You're lost, admit that first. Because we're uh, no, I know we're not lost. Oh, you knew that yesterday too, and you knew that twice Look, today. Look, with its unknown actors, largely improvised dialogue, and handheld cinematography, it comes as no surprise that this horror film was made for less than a million dollars. Come up here quick! I need to use the CP. The home movie aesthetic proved to be a selling point, however, as audiences weren't sure if they were witnessing a legitimate documentary or the greatest hoax ever filmed. I'm scared to close my eyes. Just as found footage flicks were a novel idea at the time, so was viral marketing, and the internet played a huge role in its $248 million box office revenue. <laughs> A different kind of B-movie for a new generation, The Blair Witch Project was a true game changer. Number 7. Mad Max Mad Max Fury Road cost at least $150 million, and even scored a Best Picture nomination. <laughs> this franchise is rooted in B-movie glory, though, and the 1979 classic remains Max Rokotansky's grittiest outing. I don't want to wait 10 years to tell you how I'm feeling about you right now, do you know what? Starring a then relatively unknown Mel Gibson, Mad Max marked the feature length directorial debut of George Miller. Despite having limited money and resources, Miller crafted a high octane post apocalyptic world that was as hard hitting as a war zone and as hellish as a heavy metal album cover. Bringing something utterly unique to the exploitation genre, Mad Max went on to make more than $100 million at the worldwide box office. The chain in those handcuffs is high tensile steel. It'll take you 10 minutes to hack through it with this. While the franchise would get bigger and in many respects better, revisiting the original reminds us of how much you can accomplish with so little. Number 6. Reanimator 
We're not sure if this is what H.P. Lovecraft had in mind when he wrote Herbert West Reanimator in the 1920s. You killed him! No, I did not. I gave him life. If you think about it though, many of Lovecraft's stories seem tailor-made to be reworked as B-movies, and this cult classic demonstrates why. He's dead. Twice. Reanimator has all the trademarks for a classic mad scientist tale, but what really gives the film a pulse is its sense of humor. Let us see my new serum at work. Hmm? Dead cat tissue. A talking severed head has never managed to be so gruesome and yet simultaneously so funny. It's tough to convey just how gory Reanimator gets while keeping this video in good taste, but it earns the X rating it received upon release. Looks like a laser drill. <laughs> Father's been lobotomized. To come up with some of its bloody imagery, you'd definitely need an imaginative head on your shoulders. Number 5. The Rocky Horror Picture Show The Rocky Horror Picture Show remains something of an anomaly. What kind of a place is this? Uh, it's probably some kind of hunting lodge for rich weirdos. Distinguished by its tongue-in-cheek comedy, this musical was essentially a loving send-up of B-movies. At the same time, Rocky Horror still functioned as a legitimate B-movie in its own right, with a mix of horror, science fiction, and camp. <laughs> Finding a balance between parody and homage, it showed moviegoers that trash should not be rejected. If anything, it should be embraced, and audiences most certainly embraced Rocky Horror. And from what Magenta and Columbia eagerly viewed on their television monitor, there seemed little doubt that Janet was indeed its slave. Tell us about it, Janet! Through late night showings, it exploded into a phenomenon, with fans becoming an integral part of the experience. <laughs> The fact that people still regularly attend screenings in Dr. Frankenfurter attire is a testament to the film's unlikely legacy. Midnight movies would not be what they are today without it. Number 4. Invasion of the Body Snatchers A lot of B-movies are enjoyable purely based on how over-the-top and silly they are, but Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a different breed entirely. It's alive! It's alive! The hand was cut and bleeding in the position of the body and chained! Granted, the acting can be a tad hokey, and it was clearly made for next to nothing. Keeping in line with its theme, though, the film is more than meets the eye. I saw her here. She was real. You saw her all right in every tiny detail, as vividly as anyone has ever seen anything, but only in your mind. Peeling back its plot about pod people, there's a thought-provoking message about conformity. Some critics have even argued that the film is an allegory for anti-communism, although that reportedly was not the intention. Don't fight it, Miles. It's no use. Sooner or later, you'll have to go to sleep. Commentary aside, the film works as a tense, innovative, and above all else, fun thriller. The studio may have labeled it as a B-movie, but Invasion of the Body Snatchers has gone down as an A-lister. Number 3. The Thing It's only fitting that we'd transition from one movie about body snatching to another. Is that a man in there? Something. Whatever it is, they burn it up in a hurry. With a budget of $15 million, this John Carpenter classic did admittedly cost more than some of the other movies on our list. Let's be honest though, The Thing is a B movie at its core, from its creepy central creature to its cast of cult actors to its joyfully disgusting practical effects. In a way, B movies have always been in Carpenter's DNA with They Live being another key example. Of all his films, however, The Thing possesses the most qualities that we look for in a B-movie. This is pure nonsense. Doesn't prove a thing. I thought you'd feel that way, Gary. You were the only one that could have got to that blood. We'll do you last. It's the kind of flick that's best experienced late at night, with a bucket of popcorn ready to throw up into the air in shock. Number 2. The Evil Dead oh, You bastards! Why are you torturing me like this? Why? This film single-handedly launched the careers of director Sam Raimi and lead actor Bruce Campbell. Its plot was straightforward. Five college kids are staying in a cabin in the woods when they inadvertently unleash the undead through an audio tape. The Evil Dead's story and gore even had Stephen King raving. I fear that the only way to stop those possessed by the spirits of the book is through the act of bodily dismemberment. 
In fact, the critical reviews it earned back then still stand now. The cult classic was also an instant financial success everywhere, except for the states where its $2.4 million gross was considered disappointing. Regardless, the supernatural horror flick would go on to spawn a media franchise, including two well-received sequels, Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, video games, and a TV series. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. B-Movie Sorry, could not resist. Number 1. Night of the Living Dead They're coming to get you, Barbara. The 60s movie immediately became the standard for zombie films. George A. Romero's classic was produced on a measly $114,000 budget and earned more than $30 million at the box office. As it was released a month before the introduction of the MPAA film rating system, many unaware parents let their children go see Night of the Living Dead, and since many came out emotionally traumatized, a public outcry quickly ensued. The wave of murder which is sweeping the eastern third of the nation is being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. Despite this, the zombie movie has made a lasting impact on the horror genre. Spawning several sequels and inspiring multiple remakes, its success also allowed co-creator John A. Russo to write the novel Return of the Living Dead, which was turned into a successful B-movie of the same name in the mid-80s directed by Dan O'Bannon. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.